This, this, this is a Tape Deck Podcast. Hello, and welcome back to We'll Run For. This is your host, Tom, and with me as always are Aaron. Hello. Michael. Hello. And Diana. Hi. How are you guys doing? Not bad. We yeah. haven't run in like eight years. Oh, man. Years. Yeah, we barely <laughs> run. Yeah. Like, I don't understand what's happening. I think we've turned into, I don't know, we're in like constant taper right now. So I think I ran, we ran a three miler on Saturday. Yeah, I ran like Monday. a seven mile run on Thursday. Oh, that's right. I did a five miler with that's some friends. Long. Yeah. I didn't do that. I did like a five miler with a couple friends on Wednesday. But that was then, that was last Thursday, and today's what Monday. Yeah, but that wasn't that long ago. I'm just saying. Yeah. Then what? Like before that Wednesday run, I don't think either of us had run because we went to Disney. Oh yeah, we were in Disney, so that was our training. <laughs> yeah, well, that's I mean, right. And we it were hot, Disney. and you walked a lot, so yeah. I yeah. think that counts. Yeah, I forgot about walking that. and eating was our training. That's right. That was our plan last time we recorded. We yes. walked and we ate and we ate and we drank. Yep. And Michael posted lots of pictures of us training. Yes. As Yay! I drank lots of beer. We actually had desserts at uh, Ooh, a lot of desserts. whatever that's being called, flower and garden. A taste of. Taste of flower and garden. Yes. We don't usually do the desserts, but they were very good. Yeah. What do you, what do you normally get? Uh, everything else. Everything else. Everything but desserts. Like savory. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just like, not a big dessert fan. It's not like yeah. anything specific. At the festivals, yeah. I tend to do like the savory stuff and the yeah. drinks, all the drinks. Yeah. But the yeah. I like the uh, the Christmas festival because it's mostly cookies. Oh yeah, that's yeah. true. That's right. Yeah, I think I avoid the desserts mostly because of the dairy. There's so much dairy in their desserts generally. Yeah, we actually yeah. walked around with lactate so that we could yeah, take actually lactate. did do that. Because we had the cheesecake. Oh well, because there was the cheesecake. Yeah. There was like a cheese fritter. There was a cheese um, Danish thing. I mean, everything had cheese in it. There was a, yeah. a peach pot, like pound cake that had oh, yeah. um, like ice cream on top of it. I mean, oh. everything had like some sort of like dairy. So, yeah, we, I think uh, maybe that is part of the reason why I don't normally do that. That's desserts. generally why I avoid them. Yeah, yeah I've but never thought about that. They're but. very good. Yeah, so we walked around <laughs> with lactate and... And eat dessert. And eat dessert. Oh. It's fun. So I'm sure those extra awesome. calories will help with our adventures. Yeah. So Yeah. What about you guys? What have you been up to? Um, not too too much. Um, it's been really nice here. So I've been going to the pool like every day, just like logging off work at four thirty and then going to the pool and reading for two hours. <laughs> nice. So that's been just a delight. That sounds it's very relaxing. Oh, how's yeah. Orange Theory going? Oh, Orange Theory. Oh, I'm doing a back at it challenge because, of course, I am, which is like a transformation challenge. So mm. it started last week and it goes to sometime in August. Okay. So we'll see. So I'm supposed to go to at least three classes a week. Um, and then they did a um, like a full body scan, which was horrifying. Um, so we'll see if I make any changes at the end of that. I was doing really good. And then, yeah, I kind of fell off the wagon this weekend, but I'm traveling this week for work, which means I can easily get back on it. So, oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. yeah we were actually talking about aren't doing Orange Theory. Yeah. I think we had talked about it a while ago. And then we said, well, maybe in the fall after like our next training block, but I don't know. We we're just talking about it on. Maybe yesterday or the day before. Yeah. Um, we said that maybe we would, um, I don't know, maybe we'll do July and August leading into the next training block. Oh, gotcha. And just do like a yeah, couple like, times a week. Yeah, maybe or... do two times a week because uh, they have a class like right around the time I would drive by it to get out of work. So I don't know. We'll see. I know that uh, it seems like it's helping you a lot. So now I kind of. I'm it, like, I, yeah. I've been wanting to cross train for a while and I feel like maybe 
that would be one of the only ways to get me to do it is to force me into paying for it. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I think, I mean, I think the floor stuff helps me a little bit. Mm -hmm. But honestly, I think it's doing so much different stuff on the treadmill, which yeah. is helping me. Just random. Yeah, the way it's uh, yeah. Yeah, inclined. More than anything speed. else. And yeah. then the rower for my legs getting stronger. Oh, yeah. The but rower like, is a great workout. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't know. I, I We always say we're going to cross train. I even bought like a bunch of stuff to try to do it. And then I don't know, being at home, I just never, I can never get into it, which is you weird because be I in like the mood and yeah. I started like when I started, <clears throat> even before I started my run journey, I had started doing the in home, like the uh, T25 and like the 21 day fix. And I was able to totally motivate myself through that. But for some reason, I don't, I can't seem to get on board with doing it at home now. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah. But so. I felt like, I don't know, Orange Theory was when I felt my best, like when I was running and yeah, doing Orange Theory. Yeah, we were Theory, talking about so, that. So, yeah. So, yeah, we, we might pick it up in July when we get back from um, the Grand Canyon. Oh, yeah, that's fun. Yeah, I have all this, like, workout stuff just sitting in the living room, and, like, I haven't touched it in, like, two months. Yeah. yeah like, I have a bench and, like, yeah. weighted balls and, like, all that stuff. And yeah. I used to, like, while I was watching TV, like, oh, I'm just going to lay on the floor and do sit-ups with this, like, 20-pound ball or whatever, and I haven't done it in forever. I really need to get back into doing that kind of stuff, or I do, like, step-ups on the bench. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Just that kind of stuff. Well, that's what I bought the stepper for that so that like if we're just sitting out here, I could just grab the stepper and do that. And then I just never did. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I don't know. There's something about going to a class that motivates you more, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. That Especially when you're you paying yeah. for it. Yeah. yeah. I was actually because I'm still technically a member of the Y because Tom has a family plan with mm. it for us. Mm -hmm. It's what he pays for. I was actually thinking about going and doing – um body pump like two days a week and just looking at the schedule and just seeing um to get some more tra cross training because not that the orange theory like weights and stuff don't help but it's really quick i mean you're only usually in that block for 14 minutes sometimes yeah. less and you know yeah that's true because the way it it's broken up yeah that was one thing I liked about it. You're only in it for a certain period. You're doing this, you're doing that and you're moving around mm -hmm. and yeah it's, it's super Oh, my God. Today sucked so bad. <laughs> so we did um, – they called it – I forget what they called it. They had some horrible name for it, Inferno or something. Oh, oh the, the Inferno or the Tornado or whatever. It was, it was something like that where, like, we ran uh, 0 0.1 miles on the treadmill – and then jumped off the treadmill and got on the rower and did 100 meters. And then 0.1 and then 200 meters. And then 0.1 oh, and yeah. then 300. So we got up to, I did like 0.1. And then I think the furthest I got was like 700 or 800 meters. Oh. So I had like over 3,000 meters yep. of the day. It was that's freaking a, miserable. <laughs> that's a lot of rowing. It was yeah. so bad. Like my legs felt like jello. Mm. The rower really gets your heart going. Yeah, I think part of the reason I want to, like, re like brought up us going to Orange Theory was, uh, I don't know, I feel like I'm at a low fitness ebb <laughs> mm -hmm. in the last couple of years. Mm. Like, I feel comfortable doing the Grand Canyon thing or, like, really long runs or whatever. Yeah, but, I mean, we But I don't feel like I can do them in a quality way. Yeah, we don't have it. We have endurance to, like... Mentally and in the mental mentality, I guess, to get through it. But, but yeah. neither of us are in good shape, great shape <laughs> for sure. Which is We're weird. Definitely but yeah. not where. Like when I think back to like that year that I did all those um, accidental PRs and stuff, I was in such good shape. And the idea of even running like a marathon at like a decent pace, or even like a sub 11 pace, let alone a sub four marathon. I like those two things right now aren't, aren't even close to each other. Yeah. I don't feel like I have any kind of fitness to do anything fast. Like, yeah. Other than grind for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Which is, it's just, we, yeah, I just, I don't know. Pandemic. I mean like pandemic levels of fitness right now. Tom, <laughs> getting ready to start training for, uh, all your stuff coming up? You got a, a half marathon, right? 
we just got to get past Frederick and then <laughs> and and then there will be ample time to actually train for the I think four events that we have in a like oh in the pretty, fall a yeah pretty quick yeah. yeah but like we'll have some time to actually definitely properly train for that block of mm-hmm. stuff yeah Fred, Frederick is going to be a nightmare it's going to be it, I hope we survive <laughs> oh my god I, yeah. I don't think I've really run since we did the 10 miler a couple weeks ago mm. Yeah, because last weekend my nephew spent the night, and I had a baby shower at like ten a.m., which is really early. And we were out the night before, so I didn't get up and run before that. And then this weekend we had your swim, so it's two weekends without a long run. So I guess this weekend I'm gonna have to do eight, maybe. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I don't know. Guys, we're a running podcast where none of us are running. Nobody's running. <laughs> like, and I feel like it's like it's unintentional. Like, I felt like I wanted to run, and then I, we just had life. Mm. So. Yeah, I mean, that happens for sure. Well, we'll get to it in a minute, and we, we, have, a, we have a review, but I was going to do five miles for that review today. Yeah. And, and it's 100 degrees outside, real feel. Yeah. <laughs> and then it started pouring, so I'm like... I'll do it tomorrow. I'll I'll do those five miles within the next day or so. But yeah, I yeah. have I have to have yeah. to do a long run on Saturday. Yeah, that's that's just a non negotiable. Yeah, yeah. We almost fell into the trap of doing too much before a big event again. We did. Uh, yeah. Well, because we talked about running. Well, I did. I'm sorry. Never mind. It was me. I was gonna. <laughs> I was like, hey, we should do ten and ten on Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. And I'm she's like, like, what are you what talking are you about? Talking about? <laughs> I'm like, you realize that the Grand Canyon is like on Friday. He's like, oh. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, we're not running 20 miles this weekend. That's not happening. And then get the F out of here. Well, when we were in Disney, we did like 30,000 steps three days in a row. Yeah. Not including yeah. standing and everything else also. So. Yeah, I think that Garmin said it was 12 or 13.1, which I thought was funny because it was a half marathon, yeah. 15 <laughs> and then 12 miles. Yeah. So, I mean, that, that, we th- were on our legit, feet a lot. Yeah, those are legit miles yeah. in, a, in a humid climate. Like, yeah. That all counts. Yeah. yeah, which was sort of our plan, right, was to stand on our that feet all day. That was the point, just to be on our feet. Be in yeah. the heat all day. So yeah. it sort of worked out. Yeah. Speaking of Disney. Oh, yeah, we saw a couple people. Oh, uh, well, that's not what I was going to bring oh, up at all. Oh, never mind. But okay. All right, forget it. <laughs> we did see people <laughs> who listened to the podcast, so we can bring them up. <laughs> we had an, we yes. apparently were unwittingly in a birthday celebration. Yeah, we saw Zane <laughs> and his wife. And I feel like it you was guys his birthday talked about and we had this. no idea. I, I think you guys talked about this on the last episode. <laughs> like, that, I think you did a recap of your trip on the last episode. We, did we? couldn't have because we were on our way to Disney. Oh, we, yeah. Uh, we, oh, we, we said we were going to meet him, though. I was going to say we. No, I don't Where think so. Hear the birth- I hear, I've heard oh, the birthday story. We recorded inside the Runner Studios. Oh, and we were chat. We were chatting before that. <laughs> that's what wow. it was. I was like, that's yeah, we did. what it was. That's I was right. Like I've heard this, <laughs> and we were definitely recording when you said it. <laughs> because we were doing, yeah, we were doing Runner Studios. That's what it was. Oh Very God! Cool. All right, stop. You can go back. You can because it was like forty-five <laughs> minutes that we were all going to take a break. Oh we yeah. We just kept talking. Yeah, we just uh, yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, I yeah, have yeah. no idea. I was like, we had headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> and you know, she's not that engaged. I'm like, I have no idea. Where, I wasn't even going to bring this up. I was trying to bring up the thing that's on the screen that says "Run Disney." Oh, is that what you're talking <laughs> about with right? Disney? Yeah. I'm sorry. We well, anyway, we saw Zane and Mark and Megan. Well, now you're gonna <laughs> you're gonna try and edit all around that. What? Well, you, well I'm not supposed to bring them up. No, but like you, the way you were like. Oh. Anyway, we brought. Like, you're oh no, no! I was just saying. Them. Anyway, I wasn't trying to create an edit spot. No. What about Run Disney, guys? <laughs> did you know that Disney has a Disney does <laughs> races? Did you know that there's this thing called Race Disney? And they do Run Disney. <laughs> they do races. I hear they do races. Yeah, they do. <laughs> This is a hot mess. A all right, 5K ready? Mar- I'm going to start all over again. <laughs> they do a 5K marathon. <laughs> oh my God, I hate everyone. 5K the, the 10K marathon. marathon. Oh, 
week. When were you guys in Disney? <laughs> Last week. Oh, Not well, this weekend, the, 11th the weekend and the 12th. Before, yeah. So speaking of Disney, did you guys uh, see all the hubbub on Instagram and Facebook the other day when the uh, they put out some links that were working and showed dates for the possible marathon and Princess Weekend? Yeah, but then what happened? Did they pull them back? Did they disappear? Uh, so, it seems like they were testing. It, I right? think that they were te- like my. My guess is that they were testing or like putting up the information because there is a screenshot and, you know, whether it's a troll or not, who knows, <laughs> um, that had like a possible registration date of, that said coming soon registration July 20th. And I thought that that could be a troll until someone posted the princess one and the princess one was active and I clicked on it and it took me when I signed in, it took me to the registration page that had coming soon princess weekend and it had dates on it and there's a a logo that got uh leaked with the marathon weekend logo the 2022 marathon weekend and it does not say the word virtual in it that's a good sign so that's a good sign well i'll be wrong or at least i'll be wrong (laughs) yeah i was convinced it wasn't happening yeah actually i was by the last one too Yeah, yeah i don't know i mean um I don't. Well, by the time this episode comes out, there'll already be an announcement. It's possible in our that there will be mean nothing. an announcement. 100%. All right. I don't know. We're not doing any Run Disney until 2023. What? So even if Run Disney comes back next year, we're, I I don't think we're signing up for anything. We've got so much going on next year, and like two Disney trips that aren't part of that Disney yeah. related. So, what are we talking about doing Universal? Yeah, I know people might compare Universal to Disney and it may get a bad rap but I'm very excited to go to Universal yeah you've never been right yeah you've never um, been to Universal oh wow that's awesome I've never been I'm oh. very very excited it, yeah, I want to like see it. everything tickets are so ridiculously expensive oh that's Universal. everything yeah yeah well, I mean, but, that's how Disney is, too, if you don't have uh, have an annual pass. God, right? now like, without the annual passes, yeah. yeah and, like, like so tiered-wise, like, what, one day at Universal and Disney are both, like, oh, well over $100, right, per person? Yeah, yeah, and the days we were looking to go um, in October, it was almost $200 a ticket oh my God. to get yeah. into Universal. God. Is that, like, um, for an event that... No, it was just... Are I, you guys staying I, after Mark and Megan's wedding for that? No, I think we were going to come in Thursday and then go that Friday. Yeah, so we're thinking about Universal. There you go. <laughs> well, I still want that uh, reservation at Sanaa. So you'll have oh, to yeah. let us know if you end up going there because uh, we'll have to f- somehow figure out some time to go. Maybe yeah, Tom's never bef- been to Sanaa. Michael, yes. do we have any new five-star <laughs> reviews? We have a new five-star review. In our notes, I was very confused by and thought Tom was listening to a podcast called Moonlit Heaven. I don't know why <laughs> I thought that. But I was like, I've never heard of that. Uh, so, Moonlit Heaven, I'm hooked. Uh, episode one down, started episode two. I have a love-hate relationship with podcasts. Couldn't seem to find one that spoke to me. This one speaks volumes to me. I can't wait to catch up. Guys, she well, started at episode one. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Heaven. Let heaven. That's rough. I'm very <laughs> sorry. I, I will tell you, other than this episode that you're listening to right now, <laughs> they get they get better. And I'm not I'm 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 just being serious. Like that first couple you're gonna get to the episode where I list every single race I've ever done since I started running. <laughs> um, and it's very self serving, but thank you for listening. Mm. We really, really appreciate it and we hope you continue your journey because it does get better. Also, tell us who you are. Because yeah. uh, Moonlit Heaven does not um, go with an Instagram handle that we are familiar with. We did have a couple new people who shared uh, the pod. I know Maria, or not Maria. Um, I think that's her name. No, not Leah. Anna oh. Runs a Coffee oh, yeah. had uh, her friend Maria. That's what um, it was. Run point eight miles. Oh for my your birthday, god! Yeah, which we didn't yes. even talk about. Oh my god! But who ran point eight miles for your birthday? That was pretty hilarious. And I found the podcast that way. So I don't know if that's her. Uh, we were thinking that maybe it could be her. So let us know if it's you or not. Yes. Yeah. And if it's not, then uh, whoever you are, let us know. <laughs> so Tom can Absolutely. tag you. Yes. So yeah. thank you for the five star review and everybody else. If you leave one, that'd be awesome. And also just like. 
do like Anna, share the show with your friends and all that kind of stuff. Uh, share the show and troll Michael. Yeah, I would like to thank Anna for running her 0. 0.8 miles, getting Maria to run 0. 0.8 miles, and then Susanna running a quarter mile for the amount of miles left in the marathon when I abandoned her. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I love it. So half oh, of Daddy Chicago was trolling me for my birthday. <laughs> As they should. Be. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. And that Instagram video you did with her voiceover. I oh my! So hard. Oh, I forgot about Anna's voiceover. <laughs> I loved it. I laughed so hard. Also, Anna wins the year because she sent you. Oh my the, god! The the Bluetooth Bluetooth speaker. speaker. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Oh gosh. That we now use regularly actually. Yeah, we we, <laughs> we had it. It's our bathroom speaker. We had it outside with us when we were beer drinking. So it's our beer drinking speaker. It's about to be your Grand Canyon speaker. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It'd be echoing off the walls of the canyon. Oh gosh. Oh. Uh, All right, y'all. What are we running for this week? It seems like it took a while to get to this part. <laughs> <laughs> but what are we running for this week? Uh, I'll start. Oh, go okay, for it. Go ahead. Uh, half marathon heat training. Um, it's going to be real hot. In oh, yeah. Three weeks when we do our next half. Um, and I'm not speaking for Diana. I'm definitely under trained and it's really hot out. So I've got to run. I just got to run. That's it. That's all. End of sentence. I have to run. Yeah. End of period. Sentence. I got gotcha. you. Yeah. I th- I think um I think I'm there with you. Um, but what I'm running for this week in particular is when you did your swim, I did nothing but drink beer all weekend. <laughs> right. So That's a we plus. went to what four different breweries uh in the Loray at, uh area. That's the and, way to do it. Um, yeah. So I ran for all of the beer. Awesome. Hmm. Well, Michael and I are running for similar things. Mine is for the grand adventure that we're about to partake in in the Grand Canyon. Mine is to not die. <laughs> it's a simple goal. They simple are, goal. Yes. They are, Don't die. They are both similar in their things, and I think that in the end, both of us have the same goal of not dying. Not dying is goal one. Speaking of All goals... Right. Oh, yeah. that's a that's a transition and a half. <laughs> so speaking of goals, do we have any goal getters this week? We do. And we have a new uh, goal getters audio. If you didn't hear us on Instagram. Oh, my gosh. Did you hear Michael's? Polo. I did a polo. I did it. I'm a go-getter. You're a real go-getter, Rock. <laughs> I'm so proud of you. I'm I like so, <laughs> so proud. Why? Why is this? Uh, why was this a man. thing? I'm not even joking. When he man. was doing this, I'm like sitting there not expecting it. And all of a sudden, I just hear this vomity okay. noise, come, grunting noise coming out of his mouth. Uh, and I thought something was wrong. I'll tell you. that For those who can't see it, that was the... Uh, famous beach scene in uh what's that rocky three with apollo and rocky training and then rocky finally beats him in a race and they jump up and down and hug in the water and i would like to thank carl and sly for sending in that audio for us it's really nice of them (laughs) that sounds uh, that sounds magical i've never seen a rocky movie oh Oh, wow any of them you don't want Uh, to they don't hold up i might get on a tangent but man, that first one doesn't hold up so well yeah problematic there's some uncomfortable scenes yeah yeah (laughs) Uh, um, let's uh, let's send it over to Neil for our real intro. And now it's time for our will run for goal getters. Congrats on making your goals, you getters! Oh, you shit. All right, we have our uh, goal getter favorite. Anna runs on coffee. We Her- don't have favorites around here. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, we have Anna runs on coffee. <laughs> Her goal was to get uh, Aaron and Susanna. And Leah Miller to suffer. Uh, she means run with her in September. And mission accomplished. They're all going to the Chicago half. I don't know how this happened, guys. You are in. I am That's a, how this happened. I am a sucker <laughs> for, for destination races. And I think that it's been so long since someone's even yeah, like, true. tried to convince me to do a destination race that I was like, 
all in on it and now I have regrets but I know I'm really <laughs> sad I'm actually really sad I've got FOMO that I'm missing it but it's literally the weekend before we go to Disney yeah because so I asked you yeah 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 I'm away at the Outer Banks with some friends that weekend so it kind of worked out yeah um on a very macho guys trip. Oh God, help us! Extremely bros being bros. <laughs> very, very, very macho. Uh, so, Caitlin moves. It's really a small goal, but I finally mustered up the carriage to try a Peloton cycling class. It did kick my butt, but I had a good time. That's, That's awesome. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Let's see, uh, Leah Miller exceeded her goal today at the Charlevoix. Is that how you say it? Marathon. Sure. Uh, we'll, we'll go, go with, with that. that. <laughs> uh, I've had three months. I've had a rough three months and couldn't train properly. Plus, I got a huge blister on the back of my heel during my last long run and ended up getting infected. My goal was to just finish the race today, but walked away with an official 32-minute PR. Oh, Oh my God. God. Stars aligned on a great day. First of all, can we talk about this blister? It was huge. That she sent me a picture of. I felt so bad. I was like, tape that up. Do you have any suggestions as to what to do about this blister? And then there was just a blister in my face. <laughs> like there, was, there was no escaping that picture. <laughs> so I told her to use Michael's nipple tape, and we had a whole yes. conversation about nipple tape. Actually, oh. it's uh, it's just waterproof tape, but it yes. holds up real well on your foot because it it's good. It can get wet and but stuff. But I called it Michael's nipple tape, so yeah. that's what it will forever be. It is what I used. Uh, let's see, <laughs> Angie Maloney. My doctor gave me the green light to train for half marathon in September when I'll be eight months pregnant. So far, I've managed to run at least once per week through the first 21 weeks, plus playing softball and gardening. And that half marathon is the Chicago half. Oh, is it? I will be at. I was wondering. I was actually going to ask that. That's awesome. Uh, Jennifer Cook, my goal is to have Aaron register for the (laughs) Smutty Nose half up in New Hampshire in October. (laughs) Russ Kathy may have accommodations for you and Michael. (laughs) happening so aaron is uh having to register for all the races i don't understand what's happening what's the over under i bet you do it i bet you do it oh my gosh it's well, a smutty nose has really good, good beer, beer. So. I, well, yeah. this, that's how this happened was because i commented that that's on my bucket list of halves for new hampshire and she was like oh great come do it and i like how she's volunteering her friends to put us up <laughs> She didn't. It's not even like she was like. That's what you do? That's how you Come do stay it. at my place. She's yeah, like, Brez Kathy has a place for you. There you go. Uh, Greg in Orlando. He he did the running for Ohana 5K, uh, and he had a goal to run it all after five mile warm uh, five mile warm up to meet his eight miles for Tuesday, and it benefited the cast member pantry. Uh, it raised ten thousand dollars, which is awesome. That's so cool. Uh, Steve Moss, I got a live in-person 10K with the Annapolis Striders. It was hot and slow, but good to be back on a course with live people. If my watch hadn't inadvertently deleted the race, I'd know how slow it actually was. Uh, I have a question. Was he running with dead people previously? (laughs) (laughs) He said it was... (laughs) It's good to be back back on a course with with live people. people. Wow. We did do wow. an uh was it the uh B N A yeah, B N A. B N N or B N A B N A. B N A. That was a, Annapolis. Oh yes. that makes sense. That makes maybe more sense, guys. <laughs> uh, wasn't that an Annapolis Striders event? Yes. Okay. Yes. They do they put on a good event. Uh let's see. Robert, of course, Robert from Pineland Striders, who we just had on inside the actor's studio. You'll hear in, in uh, about a Runner two studio. months. Oh, Robert's not an actor? <laughs> He's not an actor. Weird. He could, he could be. He could be. He crushed his sub two half marathon goal with a 150. Got a three minute PR and first in his age group. Uh, his new goal for July 10th is the fat sass switchback to complete 25 miles and 7,500 feet of climbing in the six hours. Uh, and he ran the 150 in the half sour, half kraut, which is a half trail race half uh, path race. Yeah, so, I think we talked about that was yeah. his goal on the last one. So that was awesome. Uh, before you move yeah. on, I would just like to mention that Kimberly, who was mm, on today's uh-huh. Inside the uh, Runner Studio, she like did Mount all this Saint trail Helens. stuff yeah. on Mount St. Helen. Helen, and I'm totally mm-hmm. adding that it's to amazing. our bucket li- yeah. list. 
Oh, yeah. It looked amazing. It was yes. not it was on her. She was not a goal getter per se, but she did say in that post that she was making it a goal to climb the whole thing next time because they, they didn't summit this time, but next time she wants to. She wants awesome. to do it this summer. And I was like, ooh, that's amazing. So shout out to her, especially because she had her episode come out today. So I just wanted to mention that, too. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Love her. So, Tom. Yeah. Are you a goal getter? I am. And what goal did you accomplish? So here's the thing. I was a swimmer growing up, um, but I haven't swam in a very, very, very long time. So I was looking for just some new goal for this year. And I saw like a, a YouTube video for the Loray Swim Fest and I looked into it um, and it looked like something I could do. So I registered and I trained in the pool at the Y. I did not train in open water, which would have probably helped. <laughs> um, but this past weekend, I completed the 1500, which is, I guess, 0.93 of a mile. Mm. That's um, pretty that's damn pretty good. Far, yeah. I was, it, it's, it's like mixed feelings because I feel like I could have trained better and felt better in the water. But, like, I had a lot of anxiety going into it. Like, first open water swim, um, you know, and, and, like, when you're training in a pool, you can stop. You can hold on to the yeah. wall. You can do a lot of things that you can't do in open water. Yeah. So that that was kind of intimidating. And you've never done a – like, we've done a ton of running events, but we've never done a swim event. So it's weird. It's like going to your first 5K all over again. You're like, yeah. well, what yeah. do I do? Like, what happened? How yeah. does it all work? Like, Is it like triathlon? It was a lot of that. Was, there a, was it like triathlon where – did they do a rolling start? Did they do an, a full I, – I saw videos, and yeah. it seemed like a, a lot of people were in the water already. Yeah, So so there are three events. It was okay. a 750, 1500, and 2250. So basically a half mile, a full mile, and like a mile and a half. And some people signed up for all three events. Actually, most of the people there signed up for all three events. Oh, my gosh. So at, so at the end of it, they were like 4,500 meters. Oh, wow. I couldn't believe it. That's like, insane. So the reason why we know that is because for each event, it wasn't even a separate event, but for how many events you were doing, you got a separate cap um, Mm. that was a different color. So if you were just doing one of the swims, you got green. If you were doing two, you got blue. And if you were doing all three, you got white. And I would say 80% of the people had white caps. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh, my God, everyone's doing all three of them. So who Um, went first? 750. Okay. But okay, so they staged the men and then they let the men like wade into the water. And so you could be, you started in the water. Okay. So that's why you saw people kind of walking into the water and then they hit the go and then you would just kind of start yeah. swimming. While the men were in the water, they would stage the women. Okay. Um, so that's just how they spaced it out. So 750 went and then they, you know, after everyone was done, they staged – well, right before each event, they would allow for maybe 10 minutes people to get in the water and just stretch out, swim a little bit. Okay. Um, just to feel the water temperature and all that kind of thing. Um, How was so the water temperature? It was 78 degrees. Oh, okay. So it wasn't cold. It mm. wasn't, you know. That's awesome. Um, it was overcast but not too humid. So, like, it wasn't overly hot. Like – it was perfect conditions mm-hmm. for this event. Okay. Um, I would have I would have been cold. Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, well, and and so swimsuit the uh, swimsuits um, wetsuits were allowed. Okay. Because okay. up to a certain temperature, yeah. they're but it was after right on the cusp of the temperature. Like if it was like point something degrees warmer, yeah. They wouldn't have been allowed to wear the, the wet suits. Oh, okay. I, I was just going to ask that because I know there's a cutoff. I couldn't remember what it was, though. I, I didn't remember what it was. It's 78 point something, and the temperature was 78.0. Okay. Oh, wow. So it was like right there. Yeah. Yeah, it was right there. Um, and then for the, what did you say the first one was? 750? 750. 750. It was just kind of this large triangle loop, and then you got out and you ran to the finish line. 
um, if you did the further distance, you actually had to get out of the water, which is we, I, we posted a video of Tom getting out of the water and he had to kind of cross over and then get back in the water to go mm. in for another lap. Yeah. Because the triangle, what was just the 750 then? So if you so if you were doing the 15, you had to do two 750s. Is that what yep. it was? Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It looked so far. Like I looked at it and I was like, I would never be able to swim that. Wow. Yeah. It like, I don't know, in your head, and I guess when you're thinking about like laps in a pool, you're like, oh, it's not that bad. And then when you see it, you're like, dear God. Well, that's it, like, far, yeah. Well, I did, it's far. I did a sprint try, so that's only a quarter mile, and that was far. I thought like that was far in the open water. So I don't know that I could do almost, almost a, a mile. Almost a mile, yeah. Yeah. Well, and it was crazy because, I mean, I'm just so proud of him and so impressed that he finished because – people would get out of the water and not get back in like and finish. They would just do the 750 and be like, I'm done. I can't go anymore. Or there were some people that got back in the water and swam out like 50 yards and were like, Nope. And like turned around. Oh, wow. Like, so yeah, I'm just so impressed that he actually did the whole thing. Um, because I just saw so many people stopping. Yeah. I mean, I felt like I could finish all i wanted to do was finish this event like i just wanted to keep going i didn't want to be last but like in my head i didn't necessarily care because like i knew how much i trained and i was looking at these other people and i'm like man we have different body types like <laughs> as long as long as i can make it through this thing like and and not get to a point where i'm so exhausted out way out in the water that i have to be dra- you know dragged back in but um uh, they had these each. Yeah, it was basically a straight line out 300 meters. You make an immediate right 150 meters and then an another immediate right to take you back in 300 meters. So it was just straight lines and the lines. They had these giant orange um, triangle float like um, yeah. buoys. So basically that you just sighted. And yeah, like I, I was just going to ask you about that. How, how was your sighting? Like I know that was one of like. I'm impressed that you were able to do this without ever practicing in open water because I feel like that was one of the hardest things when I got the first time I ever got into open water was trying to figure out how to make sure I was swimming straight (laughs) and seeing the buoys ahead. Uh, My goggles fogged up almost immediately. Mm. Um, Did you panic? (laughs) No, because and that's why I mentioned the big orange triangles because they were so prominent okay like i would just point at one of them and try to get to that one okay and and then swim past it and i saw the other one and i would just but i kept picking my head up okay and so my whole goal was to toggle between freestyle and breaststroke okay because you know freestyle i'm trying to like actually move forward and and have some speed but then if my if i get too gassed and i need to breathe like breaststroke is pretty easy and you can see very see, clearly yeah you can see better so like my strategy worked i mean i'm slow but like it's not self-deprecating i'll tell you why it's not self-deprecating because i had two laps the winner lapped me oh. <laughs> <laughs> so i start with all the guys and i'm going pretty good and then i kind of fall behind the guys and then i'm like i you can hear really well too mm-hmm. and like I hear them staging the women and I'm like, all right, here we go. And then the women catch me and then the women pass me. (laughs) And then as I'm coming in, as I'm coming in, I can see like the, the, the part where you're going to come out of the water. I hear them start rooting. Hey, here's our first place male. And I'm like, that guy has done this twice now. Oh my God. And I got to get out of the water and get back in the water. Yeah. And there were a lot of, there were a lot younger people than I thought. Like one person that finished was like 12 years old. Oh my gosh. Wow. Yeah. Um, But the person that won did it in like, 18 minutes or something. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Well, my friend Lynn, her daughter is like a junior Olympic athlete uh, for swim. And so she's, when COVID happened and they weren't doing this, she started doing some of the open water stuff. So this is like the kind of stuff she would have done. So, I mean, when you talk about like younger people, like, yeah, she would, would have been probably one of those 12 year olds, like out there <laughs> lapping people. I would definitely do it again. It was a really good event. They put on a really good event, like the logistics of everything. Um, 
my like my confidence level would be through the roof because now I know what to expect. Did they right? do they does this one who put it on, do they do multiple swim events? Yeah, yeah. Because okay. this is a perfect location. And so Chris and Lisa from the Games We Grew Up With podcast, they were with us. And and Chris has done I think they both have done a try in this exact location. So they knew the location very well and they like Chris could give me tips and yeah, they do like a duathlon, they do a triathlon, they do other kind of running events and and um if you live local, you can actually use this lake to do to practice open water swimming. How was the lake cuz I know I've been in some really disgusting ones. Was this pretty It nice? was fine. Honestly, okay. it was fine. Could you like, see the bottom or feel stuff on the bottom or you you could not see I had goggles. You could not see past five feet in front of your face. Okay. But at its deepest part it was over forty feet deep. Okay. Oh, okay. Um and like deep water kind of freaks me yeah, out. Yeah, I was gonna say that would have freaked me out. But like <laughs> again, well was, you're uh, you were more worried about Nessie than you were about about Jaws and a that's lake. That's true. Nessie. <laughs> but see, I was worried about the water temperature because I didn't have a wetsuit. That yeah. wasn't a factor. I was worried that I was going to get so gassed that I was going to have to like flip over on my back and tread water. I never stopped moving the entire time. I was I was worried about like my my bathing suit being either too short or too long because let me tell you, <laughs> I bought three bathing suits for this thing. Like one is like like half of my thigh. Like it's a Michael shorty short. <laughs> Um, and then I found the, like the right length. So I had the best range of motion, like all of the things that I was nervous about were immediately, pretty much immediately went away. That's awesome. So, yeah, but uh, tell you what, um, Diana posted a video and I am very body positive, but man, <laughs> oh, stop. man, I mean, no, no, I'm so fine. I'm fine. It's not self deprecating, but I'm like, like, I what? think my favorite part of the video um, it's when he's crossing the finish line and he gets out of the water and starts like walking really slow oh, yeah. and like talking and making uh-huh. jokes. And the guy's like, yeah. you have, have to, to st- still cross the finish line. <laughs> yeah. That was good. That was me. <laughs> we were dying. We were yeah. dying laughing at that. That was great. And, then, and yeah. then I had to run. I don't know how many feet it was. 20 feet. <laughs> yeah. Barely. Yeah. <laughs> Shirtless and wet. <laughs> oh, oh, that is a humbling moment. Oh gosh. Uh. Um, but no, it was it was really good. I'm I'm really happy I did it. Um, so, so when yeah. you sign it up for the next one, I don't know. We'll see what is, next year looks is like. Swim but, now your new thing. I don't know. I don't know that I I would not want to do this in the ocean. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. I, I think the this lake was perfect for for what it was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would do another event. Absolutely. Would you ever think about doing a triathlon? Because a lot of triathlons are in lakes, not. I mean, there are some ocean slash um, bay ones, yeah. but there's tons of of tries. So, and I mean, I I would consider it. I would need to train a lot more, mm. like a lot more. Um, well, that's I couldn't. I couldn't imagine. Like my my arms were absolute jello. Like I I did breaststroke for the majority of it, and my hands were so cramped because of how you like how you hold your hand when you're kind yeah. of doing breaststroke, like. Yeah, I was I was absolutely spent. I cannot imagine getting out of that water and then go getting on a bike for well. Miles. I mean, a sprint try is only like a quarter mile swim, so it'd be literally yeah. a quarter of what you did followed by a bike followed by like a five k. I could, could definitely I could definitely do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, the Olympic distance is even um, what a half a mile. So you, you, the swim is really you don't get up to that until you're up to the distance that you did until a um a half iron distance at 1.2 miles but actually that's a, a that was a reminder um one of our uh listeners and friends of the podcast ken oh, um, yeah. who lives here locally he did an iron man he just uh, did an iron man did he do a full or a Half. I think he whatever the seventy three that's 70. a half. 3 yeah. one yeah that's a half Iron Man I think that's what he did okay mm. yeah but yeah I saw that on the because we are still if you can believe it uh, crawling around the world uh, with our craw team oh there you go <laughs> so we still have a, a team out there uh, yes, we going do. around the world uh, and he is on it so oh, okay. I saw that he had done 
uh, some sort of iron distance, whether it's half or full. Mm. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not a swimmer, so I have no idea what I'm talking about. I um I never did swim team or anything like that. But I know Lisa made a comment because you kept doing the breaststroke. She's like, it probably would have been better you at certain points to flip over on your back and do mm-hmm. backstroke because you would have gone faster. That's what I did. Given you, it would have given you a a better break. Yeah, yeah. My go to is always to was always to roll on my back. I spent a lot of time on my back yes, when I was do. panic. Wow, <laughs> Aaron. Aaron, like in in everyone's defense, I I like saw the open door that you were walking through. I know. I was like, <laughs> why is she going through this? But but I'm no, no, sorry. I, yeah, no backstroke. But yeah. like, I, I spent a lot sight. of time. Yeah, no, I agree with that. You had to kind of know where you were headed, and then flip on your back, get some in, and then flip back over <laughs> so you could recite again. My, yeah, my only. My, my God, only, <laughs> Michael, we're talking about it's swimming. It's fine. Swimming. My, only, my, my biggest fear was Sheesh. to to just get off, like like off of my line and go mm-hmm. out and like yeah. burn any more than I needed to burn. Yeah, yeah that's true. Yeah, that's true too. Um, but yeah, I have a I have a definitely a respect for for people who swim. Yeah, I it's I quit. So yeah, obviously, do. I wasn't very good at it, and I. Don't no intention of ever going oh yeah i back remember when it. you were doing the uh classes with the coach or whatever yeah, yeah i yeah. did i i actually i went to swim lessons i mean i had never swam i was afraid of the water so i had literally never been in it in the pool in 30 years when i swam for the first time i mean other than putzing around playing with like you know i don't know like normal pool like normal stuff, pool yeah. stuff uh yeah yeah so yeah, yeah, that's all I've or ever done. Or floating, floating on a uh, on a raft <laughs> where mm-hmm. you just lay on your back and oh god, here we go again. Uh, where you just float yeah. on your <laughs> on a floaty. No, but the backstroke or going onto your back and kicking at least anyway, it is it will help you recover quite a bit. So I'm proud of you, Tom. Thanks. I know. You I'm had a goal. Super, that's awesome. Proud. I know. Not very many people. You know, you set a goal and you 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 did it. Yep. You're a real goal getter. Oh God, help us! <laughs> God, <laughs> God, help so, us! So speaking of Rocky, oh, God. oh boy, you know what's Rocky? What? The Grand Canyon. Oh my God! <laughs> right, <are you> guys- <laughs> it's amazing. Yes. <laughs> are you guys? So you guys the thi- are doing the Grand Canyon? Yeah. Yes. The thing is that by the time this episode drops, we'll this, either be dead. We'll either yes. This uh, whole conversation will have already. You will either know that we're dead or not. Yeah. But we can chat about our. Uh, uh quick. Yeah, we can quick go over our planning. Yeah. That's all. Uh, I mean, so last week they had, and into this week they're having absolute record temperatures for like this time of year 15 to 20 degrees uh it was 125 no, degrees in phantom ranch everyone has been like i can't believe you're going to arizona this week but you know what it's okay because this week it's cooling down a little bit to 100 to 100 uh no i mean so normally because i was talking to amy uh and i've been looking it up phantom ranch has only hit like 120 degrees uh maybe seven times in the history of phantom ranch <laughs> one of those times was like last and week. <laughs> it's hit well i think it hit it multiple times yeah, last week yeah <laughs> uh and amy is saying that this isn't normal for this time of year and I, everything i've read is uh, this is unusual um it usually doesn't get this hot until like end of july yeah, august July, august so it is what it is um it's we we had decided last week when we started seeing a lot of this that if it hit 120 we're not going to do something super dangerous like i i this is a bucket list thing i, I want to enjoy it i don't want to die <laughs> so we had decided last week that if if temperature stayed this high we would we would reevaluate so instead we are we've been keeping an eye on it everything seems fine uh, we just looked this afternoon and Phantom Ranch is supposed to be a high of 99. So it's not even going to hit 100 now. We'll see whether that stays true uh, on Friday when this here's, is happening. Here's the thing. Why do you guys always plan this stuff at like the hottest part of the year? Like It happened like, the lineup I'm was I'm going to do else. this in, in <laughs> June. Not like I'm going to do this in like 
well, January so, okay. or December, and you did the same thing last oh, summer. To be yeah. fair, when you yeah. were gonna do like fifty miles, That's you were to like, be I'm f- gonna do this on the hottest day of the year. It was really but, hot that but, day. <laughs> but to be fair to this, no, for real though, to be fair to this, the, your only real opportunities to do this are from May until October, and most of June is actually considered not is May June is is considered the okay times and then again September October so July August aren't are not recommended for this reason it is Why can't hotter you do it in the in the in the because snow. the water because snow. the water oh, oh water is off right yeah, wa- yeah. the water is only turned on from May until October at all yeah. the water stops um so there's this is actually considered a seasonal thing um so we didn't have you don't have a choice you can't be like oh i'm going to do it in december one the north you're you're also talking north rim is at like 7000 or oh, 6000 something feet of elevation so you're dealing with snow um so there is yeah, this is actually snow, like yeah. even though i agree it's super hot now and we did pick kind we're of the, at the end of the, the window the tipping yeah. point of the window we yeah. were still technically within the window of the recommended mm-hmm. time uh they don't recommend july august and then september Again, at the beginning of it can be really hot, but September, October is the second recommended time. Yeah, so the heat-wise, I mean, I think we're going to be smart about it. We have contingency plans that we'll just turn around if we feel it's unsafe. Well, yeah, so we're planning to take one trail down to the center of the canyon, and then we're cross over the Colorado, which is where Phantom Ranch is, which is the hottest part of the canyon, and then head up to North Rim. Uh, oh, I was saying that the that the temperatures uh, swing is is, is much pretty cooler, big. Yeah. So if we can get to through the canyon pretty early um, and be up to to the North Rim side by the hottest part of the day, then when we come back down, I think that we'd be okay. But like you said, we do have contingency plans. If for some reason it's way too hot or it just seems like it's not going to work, we can not cross the Colorado and just come back up the other trail and come back to South Rim. So we'll see. I mean, we are packing everything in our suitcase or in our carry-on that we absolutely need, uh, like our vests, our hydration bladders, stuff like that. Um our sneakers, um, and then hoping our suitcase gets there with the rest of it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah well, you guys are there a couple of days before you're set to go, right? So. Just one. Just one. But uh, we'll be in Phoenix. So We're we coming need, up. Yeah. yeah, we're leaving on, on Wednesday afternoon. We don't get there till 7, and then Thursday we'll drive up to the canyon. Yeah. And we'll do it. We're doing it on Friday. Gotcha. So... I mean, we'll still be in Phoenix on Thursday morning, so worst case, our, we'll know by then whether we have our luggage. Yeah, yeah. So we'll be in Phoenix. And we'll make an we'll, adjustment Oh, I've there. got a really cute brunch place for you guys to go. Although <laughs> I don't know if they do it on the weekends. Yeah, so I don't know. We'll uh, we'll take it as it comes. We're not... I don't know what the word I'm looking for is. Uh, I don't know. Commit. Not, I mean, we're not going to... I was going to say, you don't sound nervous. Yeah. Which I would be freaking out if I... I'm actually freaking out for you, <laughs> so you probably don't need to freak out. <laughs> I'm trying not to. I mean, I am nervous. Um, I think that in my head, I just need to get to the bottom and then see what happens. Yeah, I think that's step one. And so that's all I care about at this moment is just getting mm-hmm. to the bottom. And then my worst case is I just go right back up. <laughs> yeah. And don't go yeah. to the other side. Um, I mean, I don't, it would suck if we didn't get to do it it's it is a bucket list thing but um i don't know i guess i'm not that that worried if it doesn't happen here's the actual thing you should be afraid of scorpions oh. what are you doing about the scorpions Listen. we've heard about this uh, we've yeah. heard about this we've been told we were watched a ton They're of in YouTube. people's shoes yeah we've oh. watched a ton of youtube videos you have to videos. like check your shoes before you put your shoes on in the morning well, we're not gonna if you're close to the well we're being know, a cabin wilderness. so uh, no, you still have to. Like oh. people that live like close to the mountains, like people like at work will always be like, "Oh, I find them in my house all the time." Uh. <laughs> not like in the city, like not like downtown Phoenix, oh, yeah, but like yeah. in like the suburbs. People yeah. get them in their house. I'll have to ask Amy whether oh, she's God. ever had scorpions in her house. Um, I don't know. We're not. Um, 
we you were told, worried about them until right now. No, no, we were told about them. We were told make sure you don't just lean up against like the canyon. Don't put your hand on the canyon wall. Don't put your hand on a rock. Don't like think that you're just going to rest there and sit down for a minute because the next thing you know, there'll be a scorpion um, attacking you. Uh, some spider, some poisonous spiders, some, what was the other things that were all in Snakes, that video? Snakes. Know. There was all kinds of things. I was like, oh, great. This is going to be fun. All right. So here's, here's a pro, two pro tips. First, you're going to want that water. So it's good that the water's on. <laughs> second, second, if a, he looks nice and he looks friendly, but if a coyote comes up to you. It's and, not a dog. <laughs> and, it's not a, yeah, don't pet it. <laughs> and it looks like it has. It looks like um, it's a salesperson for this Acme brand. <laughs> um, don't believe him. <laughs> don't believe anything the coyote says <laughs> because it's probably some elaborate scheme to mm. shoot you with a gigantic rocket. Probably. That's true. It's probably true. <laughs> yeah, so I don't know. By the time you hear this, we'll have either done it or not, and you'll probably know. Although we won't have service for a couple days, um, probably, yeah. Friday. Well, we'll have service before the yeah. episode drops, though, because we'll be in Flagstaff by uh, so, Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> just take all the pictures, and yeah. you know, just a, I'm, I'd say enjoy the experience, but just live the experience. You know, yeah, like, yeah that's, that's the whole point. That's yeah. awesome. I think that's why I'm not nervous about it anymore, is because I I think that I kind of got over that part of it. Like I don't want to do this and not enjoy it. Like I want, this is a once possibly a once in a life opportunity. Uh, if we are successful at it, I don't know that we'd ever do it again because yeah. it's a bucket list thing. And there's so many other places to see and, and so many mm-hmm. other things to do in this world that I'm not yeah. sure that I would do rim to rim to rim again. So if this is my only chance of doing it, I want to make sure we, we do, take it as it comes and don't overthink it yeah yeah 100 percent. is it like is there like a group of people that like kind of do it together or is it just going to be you guys i'm just sure there'll us. be other people out there yeah. well we'll do it but and well i mean obviously michael won't let me talk to anybody since he's so antisocial and if i talk to somebody he's be like he's going to be just, growling like just don't talk to coyote. them don't talk just to that them coyote i'm telling you uh. He, he's got a giant mallet behind his back. Oh can't see it. <laughs> yeah. So, but no, there are, are all, like, if you watch some of the, the YouTube videos and stuff of people who, who use the GoPros and, and then post them doing it, you can see at like the water station. Sometimes there's like, like groups of 20, 30 people just hanging out there talking and stuff like that. So there's tons of people that do it. I don't know if because of the time of year, whether it'll be that crowded, um, you had a friend, Shani, who just did um, some canyon hikes down yeah, to the bottom. They were doing some. They were doing hiking. camping. Yeah. Um, I know that she was saying on on her podcast that uh, that they came across a lot of people. So it's. Yeah. I mean, it's definitely very popular. Oh yeah. 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 So one of the things I've also been watching recently, in addition to siblings or dating, um, <laughs> is kind of Instagram versus reality of national parks. Oh yeah. It's yeah. Like all these yeah. people like alone in like a creek at a national park, and then no. it's like reality. Yeah. There's like a huge line so of crowded. people like hiking like yes. Mount Zion. <laughs> <Yeah>. Like <laughs> and rim to rim to rim has be or just rim to rim has become so popular now that those trails are always from what we've seen are always packed with people now or at least there's always someone there like especially to get yeah. down to the, there's going to be someone around yeah. at some point yeah. yeah yeah part of me thinks that's comforting and then part of me would always think that would stress me out so yeah yeah, yeah. so we'll awesome. see how it goes. Well, I'm excited for you guys we'll recap it die. on the next episode if Try we're not to alive die. yeah no. so, yeah i don't know how to edit so please don't die <laughs> I mean, what I meant to say was have a great time. Uh, <laughs> take a lot of pictures, and you guys are going to do awesome. Thanks. Oh, man. So, what are we going to? Something good? Yeah, I think we're going yeah. to something uh, good. Uh, yeah, I had a hard time thinking about something good because we're still watching New Girl. Uh, and then we have watched some things recently, but they were all terrible. <laughs> so, like, I didn't want to, like, recommend them. Like, we watched this movie Crimson Peak with Tom oh, Hiddleston. God, how it was, was that? so oh. bad. It was so bad. Like, it was pretty. It was, like, a pretty movie, but it was bad and slow and not scary. Oh. And then, Didn't I don't know. That? No, we talked yes. about 
we talked about it at where the same I thought time. we talked about yes. the other thing. So, <laughs> and then the other thing is they remade Rebecca on Netflix, which I knew that was a bad idea. I knew. I knew it was going to be John, like Joan Fontaine and Laurence Olivier. Like, I knew it. It was Army Hammer, mm. known cannibal, and <laughs> allegedly, and <laughs> Lily oh James. God. And I was like, well, it'll be okay. Like, it's not going to be like Re- like Hitchcock, Rebecca. No, it was awful. It was awful. So I watched those two things. <laughs> and I was, like, really upset. But I just figured... And I haven't done this with any of the other Marvel shows because I thought it was stupid. Not stupid. I thought it was silly to recommend a show 90% of the world is watching anyway. Yeah, yeah. So it'd be like, I recommend watching the Super Bowl. Like, <laughs> it, that's how it felt, like, recommending, like, one of the Disney Plus Marvel shows. But honestly, Loki is so good. And, I mean, they've all been really good. But I feel like Loki is quickly becoming my favorite. And I just, like the fan theories and the discussion that comes with it because there was a lot of that with WandaVision, Mm -hmm. but with Falcon and winter soldier, it was really intense. And I like cried almost every episode, but there wasn't like a lot of fan theory. Yeah. I agree with that. Yeah. No, like there wasn't that. And I feel like this, you're like, what's going to happen? And you're kind of confused every episode, but in a good way. Um, So yeah, if you're not watching Loki, it's a, it's a delight. And Owen Wilson is surprisingly good. Yes, so. I I will. I That's what I was just about to say was that surprisingly, Owen Wilson and, and it's only been a few episodes, a couple episodes, but their their chemistry, too, is really, really a delight to watch. It's, yeah, it's well, they funny. were in um, Midnight in Paris together. Oh, so. okay. yeah. Um, I just find him unexpected because, uh, you know, when they cast him uh, as in that role, I was like, ah, I'm not sure how this is going to work. But seeing them together has They've been got, pretty good. You're right. It's like it's almost like a buddy comedy. Well, it's yeah, kind of like him and Thor. Yeah, like really at the heart of it, him and Thor and the chemistry they have is what makes the Thor movies. Yeah. And it's kind of the same thing. It's a different dynamic. Um, yeah. But, but yeah, the last know. episode was definitely very buddy comedy type 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 thing that you just said. Yeah. yeah. So I liked it. It's it's pretty good. Yeah, so that's what I'm going to recommend. All right. Well, my something good since, uh, I don't know, I'm going next is what I decided. Uh, <laughs> there is a podcast called Film Hags. It's actually part of our tape deck network. <laughs> uh, but that's not why I'm recommending it. It is a, a mo- movie podcast, but it's a really fun movie podcast because it's um, four women who are just, you know, their banter is really funny and really good. Their first episode or their, their first season is uh, movies that are burned into your brain. So like that movie that you saw when you were like in high school or one of the very first movies that like really you remember, not necessarily because it was good or bad or whatever, but just it, as a as a girl, you watched it so many times. So yeah, their you first don't episode, not watching. It. Yeah. <laughs> so their first episode was My Big Fat Greek Wedding. They mm-hmm. did Rent. Uh, they just did the ring, and then um, I guess because they decided that they're going to be a biweekly podcast like us. Uh, in between, they're doing these like mini episodes, and their mini episode, the first mini episode they did was this battle royale where they they had to decide who was the better rodent, Stuart Little or Ratatouille. Oh, <laughs> or what, like- Stuart Little or Remy. Like who would win in a fight, or who's better? Uh, who's who the is better? better. Who yeah, is the a better debate. rodent? <laughs> and it was really just funny listening to them have this whole conversation <laughs> about like <laughs> you have to listen to it. Uh, you would laugh. Um, you know, there's just like this white rich mouse <laughs> living in New York City. <laughs> yeah, Michael J. Fox. You know, <laughs> he's a he's a very white mouse. <laughs> Who's rich? Um, and so, so they've de- got a lot of pl- privilege. <laughs> yes. So Hashtag they- race report. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they, it's just funny. They debate whether or not, you know, who, who is the better, who's the supreme rodent? And it's just, it's just really fun. It's really, it's that. also really refreshing because it's not like just like a movie review podcast where they just talk about the film. It's, it's just, you know, it's a little bit more. And so, I enjoy yeah, it. I like that. 
Yes. Yeah. Well, yeah, and the, I mean, honestly, there's there's differences right between like the best movies ever made and like what your favorite movies are. Yeah, and that's mm-hmm. I think like, why so I, like I this. appreciate that. Yeah, yeah, that's why I think I like this because it's more like appreciative of the like everyday movie than. And the conversation around it is more how it affected their lives and like what was going on in their lives at that time and th- th- those mm-hmm. moments in time. So I like that. I like it a lot. Um, my something good is simply live music coming mm-hmm. back. We have a bunch of concert tickets for different shows in August, and I'm really excited about that. Awesome. Um, and why? What made me think of this is last night the Foo Fighters, which is one of Diana and I's favorite bands played Madison Square Garden. Um, it was a sold out show at Madison Square Garden and with full capacity. Um, and everyone was uh, required to be vaccinated. And then not only did they put on a good show, but they also brought up Dave Chappelle. Oh, yes. Oh, I saw that. To, <laughs> sing, a, to sing a cover, like a Radiohead cover. <laughs> And like just those moments to yeah. be in that crowd after the year ish that we just went through. Yeah. Like that's a magical moment. You want to talk about magical moments? That's what gets little Tommy Stover Dave really, Chappelle really excited. Singing creep. Yeah. Also, can I just appreciate the Foo Fighters just for a minute because they required their whole audience to show proof of vaccine. So they had protesters. And one of the protesters was Ricky Schroeder. So if you're pissing off Ricky Schroeder, I think you're doing something like really right. The Rick- <laughs> really right in the world. Like that should be everyone something good. The Ricker. <laughs> oh, God. What, what, what was that? Silver Spoons? Yeah, so it was from Silver Spoons. It's <laughs> amazing. Oh uh, he also had a weird story arc on Scrubs. Oh, did he? Oh, God. Yes, yeah. he did. Uh, he did an Elliot for a while. <laughs> Uh, my something good is Donna, the wonderful companion from the David Tennant years of Doctor Who. Oh, yeah. Uh, we just revisited her uh, second-ish episode. Yeah, but it's her like first, first real First season episode, episode yeah. non-Christmas episode. Yeah. Uh, where the Adipose, where I forget what the name of the episode is, not called Adipose, but it should be because that's all that's oh really my God, in it. Where those little baby things come out of, of people, oh, that's yeah, right. out of people. yeah. <laughs> and they're just really like adorable. And this amazing really scene far. where Donna and the Doctor see each other for the first time and are talking through the glass <laughs> to each other with not saying anything, and it's so absurd and ridiculous. And she's hilarious, and Donna's just one of my favorite companions. So. She was, um, she was also on The Office. Oh, she was in the Office UK, right? Or no? Uh, no, the she was US. on the American Office. Yeah, that's office. right. Yeah. yeah, in the later seasons, right? In the later yeah. seasons. Yeah. Is yeah. she the British woman? Yeah, the redhead. Yeah. The redhead. Yeah. Her first I had... episode is like the wedding, right? She like runs yes. away from her wedding. That's the wedding. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the first episode oh. when she comes back after Martha is adipo- the adipose things. Yeah. Yep. But wow. uh, she's a trip on the show. It's great, and yeah. she has a great storyline. And uh, so yeah. No. Oh. A lot of David, David Tennant and Donna right now. He's so great. He's just so great. Okie dokie. Well, that brings us to the end. want to thank everyone for listening. Thank you for putting up with this episode. Oh, my God. Um, <laughs> if it sounds awesome, that's because Michael <laughs> edited it to, to the nth degree. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god we, we've we had we've had five interruptions cats oh running god. around visitors oh gosh hey yo adrian oh my god <laughs> rocky keeps stopping <laughs> by <laughs> um please continue to interact with us on social media um give us all the reviews give us all yes. the reviews we def- we saw, stars. Yeah, we saw some new names in our goal getters, which is really exciting. Yeah. Um, we want to shout you out. So, whenever we post about goal getters and you hear Rocky's voice, oh, God. Um, <laughs> you know, let us know what you're running for. Let us know what you're trading for. We will be there to support you. And so, this is Tom for Aaron, Michael, and Diana saying that if you're brave enough to say goodbye, life will reward you with a new hello. <laughs> Oh, wow. that from? I have no idea what that's from. I just Googled it. <laughs> I like how it was all sweet and sentimental, and Michael immediately started laughing at it. Goodbye, friends. Well, I almost laughed at it, too, but then I thought it came from a listener, and I didn't want to mock the listener. <laughs> <laughs> 
And so now this is the end instead of Tom's sweet sentimental. Uh, Farewell, friends. (laughs) Bye. Bye. Bye.